Good morning, and welcome to Morning Messages of Hope and Inspiration. This week, I've been thinking a lot about the Good Samaritan, and I've been sharing a couple examples in my life of when others have been Good Samaritans. I'm going to challenge you before I even start. Will you think about someone who's been a Good Samaritan in your life? Was there a time you were left half dead, you were beaten, you had wounds, maybe wounds that weren't seen, but someone did something to help you feel loved, cared for? Will you think about that for a moment? When was a time someone has been a Good Samaritan for you? Second part of this challenge, when was a time you've been a Good Samaritan for someone else? When is a time you reached out? You might have been tempted to go on the other side and keep walking, but you chose to stand up. You chose to care for someone or do something, even if you were busy, but you stopped what you were doing and you chose to care for someone. All of us in this life have opportunities to be the Good Samaritan or to receive love and service through those choosing to be a Good, Sir, a good Samaritan, choosing to give service. I have a story from my life when I'm about 13 years old. I'm in eighth grade. It's about this time of the year, it's April 1987. I'm 13 years old. I'm as tomboy as they come with buck teeth, buck teeth and freckles to match. Just this little tomboy. Daddy's little girl and my mom has had Lou Gehrig's for several years and I've been providing full-time care. My muscles are getting very strong. I can do as many pull-ups as the boys. And I'm very self-conscious about looking like the other girls. I already am starting to feel like I look more like the boys. I'm stronger. I'm more athletic. I don't look like the cheerleaders. I don't look like the other girls in the fancy dresses. My curves were just, I was much more just solid little rock, really strong and not as curvy as the other girls in eighth grade. So I was very self-conscious of myself at this point. Now add to this, add to that, my mom is dying. We have moved from Fraser Park to this little community, that little community in Fraser Park to Santa Clarita, California, over by Magic Mountain. My mom went to the hospital. She almost died of pneumonia, and then they went to the hospital and she got hospice care and moved in to live with my grandparents. So my dad moved down to be in an apartment close to my mom, and we would go visit her. And during this time, right after we moved, I of course get chicken pox. So I already feel like a tomboy, my mom is dying, and now I have chicken pox. I am like the man going from Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho. I am beaten down a little bit by chicken pox, mom's dying, and I'm a tomboy. I'm in a new place, I don't know people. And this young man comes to visit my dad. And he's in his early 20s, and he's dating a girl who's 18 and a senior at Canyon High. And they come knocking on the door, bam, bam, bam. And I open the door, here I am with my chicken pox, probably, you know, just watching movies or something. And I open the door and there's Steve and Kim. And they're like, hey, where's Blair? Where's your dad? And I'm like, he's out. And they're like, can we come in? And I'm like, no, I have chicken pox. And they're like, oh, it's not bad, we've had it. And Kim opens the door, throws her arms around me and says, it's okay, we've had it before. Don't worry about it. And we come in and we just, they totally changed my day. From being home lonely with chicken pox, with my mom dying in the hospital, like it just, they just made my day by saying it's okay that you have chicken pox. We've already had it, it's totally fine. Now let me describe Kimberly for you. Kimberly's 18, a senior in high school and a cheerleader. She is everything I want to be. She's popular, she's beautiful, like just, I'm totally in awe of her, right? Just totally in awe going, I will never be like this person. And what's cool is they came over once, right? Steve and Kimberly come over and they hang out with me this one evening in April in 1897. But then this is what's remarkable to me. Remember, the Good Samaritan showed compassion, showed compassion and met the needs of this individual. Kimberly's 18 and a cheerleader and about to graduate from high school. She's got a lot on her plate in these next two months, right before, got, right before graduation. And during this time, she chooses to come hang out with me, to take me to my pool at the apartment, to take me shopping for clothes after my mom dies, 
to get ready to go to my mom's funeral. She helps me pick out the clothes I wore at my mom's funeral. She helps me get clothes for my senior gra my eighth grade graduation. She just spends time with me. I just lost my mom. And here's this beautiful 18 year old senior in high school, hanging out with an eighth grade tomboy and bringing her other friends and taking me to lunch and taking me to go get slushies at 7-Eleven. She's spending time with me and caring for me in a way that works what I need at that time. The Levite pass, the priest pass on the other side. They see this need and they go around. They walk away from it. In our life, we walk away from things. When people need our help, we might be uncomfortable. But then there's people like the Good Samaritan and Kimberly who choose to stop, show compassion, and meet the needs of that individual. I'm lonely. My mom is dying. I'm very self-conscious of my appearance. I had chicken pox. I'm in eighth grade. I don't know anybody at school. She makes time in her life to spend time with an eighth grader? She wasn't just a cheerleader for the football team. She was a cheerleader for this little eighth grade little girl who needed a friend, who needed a big sister. Now, my mom died when I was 13 years old and I'm turning 50 this year. Kimberly has been in my life for over 35 years. She didn't just say hi and give me a hug, it's okay that you have chicken pox, which would have been wonderful. That would have been a great act of service in showing care and compassion. She didn't just help me those few months around the death of my mother, which would have been amazing in and of, in of, in and of itself because she's 18. She has a lot on her plate. She chooses to maintain contact and be a cheerleader throughout my entire life. She's been there for me. She's encouraged me. She's loved me. She's included me on family meals and her kids call me Aunt Jenny. I'm so grateful for them. I haven't had kids on my own. Kimberly's had a lot of them and she shares them with me and I love it. I love her children. I'm so grateful for that 18 year old Kimberly who chose to have compassion, who chose to think of me, who chose to serve me. There's a lot of 13 year old tomboys and there's a lot of 18 year old cheerleaders. There's a lot of people in need who are lonely, scared, afraid, lonely, fearful, sad, depressed. They might feel half dead. Are we willing to pray to God to look for times in our life or look for people in our life who need to be cared for? Or are we so concerned about the things going on? Are we so distracted by the cell phone? Are we so distracted by homework or work or whatever is going on in our life or our two-year-old? Are we too overly concerned with ourself that we're missing opportunities to love and serve as our Father would have us serve? This 18 year old had a lot on her plate. She has a million excuses that were all good excuses to not be kind to a 13 year old. Oh, you have chicken pox. Okay, we'll go get a shake. We'll go do something else. But instead they chose to minister, to love and meet the needs of the individual. Kimberly has been in my life 35 years and not only my life, but in the lives of so many others. She has chosen to serve, to feed, to lift, to be a cheerleader, to listen, and to love. This world needs more Good Samaritans. It needs more Kimberleys. And we can all follow the, act, follow the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Follow the example of this Good Samaritan and reach out and love people. Care for them, listen to them, love them, and encourage them. We can choose to be in each other's lives to help us, to help each other. God didn't send us to this planet to be alone. He didn't send us to remote islands where we would all have to figure everything out on our own. He sent us to a planet full of imperfect people who need love, and we need love. There will be times in our lives where we need to administer to others, 
to love and to serve them. Opportunities will come and we can choose. God loves us so much, he'll let us choose. We can walk on the other side of the road, see that need and turn around and walk away. Or we can choose to do as the Good Samaritan and have compassion. God will fill our hearts with love that we can offer this compassion to others. If we look for it, if we ask for it, if we pray for opportunities to be an instrument in his hands, he will provide opportunities for us to love. As we choose to pray for opportunities to love, he will provide us with those opportunities. I invite you, think about when are times other people have been a good Samaritan in your life. Will you write them a note, thank them, do a video, post it on Facebook, share that love that you received and thank them. And will you look for times that you have acted out of love and compassion to others like the Good Samaritan and look for moments in your future where you can be a Good Samaritan in someone's life and help them feel God's love. I promise you as you pray, you will receive opportunities. And the more you serve, the greater the love you will feel in your own heart from God to you and for them as you choose to serve. I testify we can be instruments in God's hands. We can be good Samaritans. And as we live the way Jesus Christ asked us to live, we will be comfortable being in his presence. We will, we will recognize him when he comes again and we will feel his love. And I say that in his beautiful name, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me for morning messages of hope and inspiration. May we all find opportunities to be good Samaritans in the lives of those around us. Thank you for joining me in messages of hope and inspiration. Please like, subscribe, and share for more messages. Have a great day.